Hello. In this section, we'll work with genetic algorithms to develop a music mixtape. We're going to begin by looking at how genetic algorithms work and identify those situations in which they are useful. Then we'll show the Python Deep library and talk about how it can be used to build a genetic algorithm. Next, we'll transition to focusing on the mixtape project by first looking at how to extract features from music using the Python Essentia library. Then we'll devise a genetic algorithm that uses these features to arrange tracks into a playlist. Now let's look at how genetic algorithms work. We'll start by talking about why we'd want to use genetic algorithms. Then we'll look at how they work and why they're called genetic algorithms. Then we'll introduce the various terms used in GAs and show a simple genetic algorithm. Genetic algorithms are inspired by evolution. So in a high level sense, evolution is the process by which individuals come together and produce offspring. These individuals inherit many of the characteristics of the parents, but also have some random variations. Fit individuals who become parents generally produce fit offspring. Less fit individuals have a lower chance of becoming parents in the first place. Over time, as parents die off, the average fitness of living individuals increases. In the real world, subpopulations start to form, or species, based on location and physical features and preferences. So we eventually see a proliferation of these species, each adapted to their environment in their own way. In software simulations of evolution, however, we don't really need or want subpopulations, so we don't simulate all individuals breeding at each time step. Instead, we pick the top two individuals and produce an offspring, and then repeat, find the top two individuals again, and so on, until we feel like stopping. Genetic algorithms are a search process. We're trying to find the most fit individual. Each individual is the kind of solution to whatever problem we're trying to solve. When two individuals produce an offspring, that offspring is another solution, possibly better or worse. So GAs are a kind of hill climbing search. Consider peaks A, B, and C shown here. B is the goal since it's the tallest. But when we're just starting the search process, we don't actually know that these peaks exist. We've only explored a small range of the possible solutions. These are the individuals in the population. So we keep producing new offspring by taking the best solution so far and producing a new, slightly randomly varied solution to keep exploring the space. GAs are iterative. We run them for a certain number of steps. At each step, we might find a better solution, but we don't know when we found the best solution. So we have to decide to stop at some point. Because of the random variations in the offspring, two different runs of genetic algorithm can produce two different outcomes. When we decide to stop the GA, we can report the most fit individual we've ever seen, but we can't know for sure if this is actually the most fit individual that's possible. Perhaps there's another higher peak that we just never saw. If we already know what the best solution looks like, the highest peak is, then we don't need genetic algorithms. We use genetic algorithms to search an unknown space of solutions to try to find a better and better solution over time. We'll never know if we found the best one. But of course, we must be able to score each solution to know which ones are better. We'll take the best two we have and produce an offspring and see if it's better than the parents and so on. So we cannot use a genetic algorithm if we can't even produce a score for the fitness of individuals. So producing a score is an essential requirement. To use genetic algorithms, we need a few things. First, we need to know what problem we're trying to solve, of course, so we can know what a solution looks like and how to score it. We need a way to represent a solution and we need a scoring function. We also need an algorithm that takes two input solutions, two individuals, and produces an output or offspring that's a combination of the parts of the input solutions. Then we need a way to modify the offspring so it explores more of the solution space. It's not just a simple combination of its parents. Consider the example of evolved antenna. A genetic algorithm was used to find the shape. The goal is to find the best antenna. We start with random shapes. Antenna shapes are then scored according to their performance in a simulator. The offspring are produced by taking parts of the parent's shapes and sticking them together. Random variation can then be applied to explore the space of possibilities. After some number of iterations, the best scoring shape so far is chosen as the winner. Now we'll introduce genetic algorithm terminology. First, we have a genetic representation. So this is the format you'll use for describing the parameters of an individual, of a solution. It's often a string of zeros and ones, so binary coding, or perhaps letters. In the case of the antenna, it might have been a line drawing. Next, we have the fitness function. This function takes as input 
the genetic representation of a particular individual and it determines its score, which might be a, a number. The score should be higher if the solution is good and lower for bad. The selection function picks out two individuals to breed and produces an offspring. Usually the selection function will pick the best, meaning more fit or high scoring individuals. The selection function can also eliminate some bad individuals if we need to save memory. Next, we have the crossover function, which takes two genetic representations and produces a new one by taking random parts of the parents, sticking them together to form the offspring. The crossover function is analogous to the way human children inherit characteristics from the parents. The purpose of crossover is to ensure the child is nearly as fit, perhaps more fit than the parents, so that the search process is actually producing better solutions over time. So if we don't have crossover, if offspring were just randomly created at each time step, then the search would not really progress good solutions. It would just be wandering about randomly. Finally, we have the mutation function, which takes the result of crossover and randomly modifies it a bit. We don't want offspring that are just copies of the features of the parents. We want offspring that are a little bit different so that we can find new and better solutions. The mutation function helps us get out of local peaks and find the higher peaks in the search space. It's important to keep in mind that these terms and functions are just the common use of genetic algorithms, but they're not the only way you can do it. You can make whatever functions you want, whatever works best. There's no single right way to use a genetic algorithm. Here's some Python code that will run the GA procedure. Assuming we have defined the various functions like fitness, selection, crossover, and mutate. We must decide ahead of time how many iterations or generations we want, maybe a thousand or so. At each iteration, we find the best individuals and produce offspring by crossover and mutation. The offspring get added to the population. And when we stop, we just print out whatever the best individual is that we have. Here's a graph of a GA I built previously. The problem was to find a good seating arrangement for a wedding. So friends sit next to each other and enemies sit far away from each other. The fitness function calculated how close the friends were and how far the enemies were, and it gave us a single score. The three graphs here show three different crossover functions. The details aren't important. The x-axis shows generations. And the lines show the score of the best individual found by that generation time. The color of the lines shows whether mutation was turned on or not. And the vertical boxes at each generation show the range of fitness scores of the population at that time. We see that the PBX crossover method with mutation found a good solution early on. We cannot be sure that this is actually the best solution for the wedding seating problem, but it's the best that we found. That's the basic idea behind genetic algorithms.